Hi! Today I'm chatting through the books I read in the month of October. I have to say I'm pretty pleased with how this reading month went. Not only did I manage to read six books, a lot of them were pretty darn long and was super successful in terms of my enjoyment with the reading that I did. I started this month so incredibly strong with both the biggest and the best book I think I have read all year so far and that is Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. This is book three to the Stormlight Archive or sometimes known as the Way of Kings. This is split into two books because overall this comes up to just under 1,400 pages. So that's what I mean when I say this is a big book. Regardless of the size of this, I managed to fly through this book within the first week of the month and was absolutely floored with how incredible it was. I really enjoyed the Stormlight Archive thus far, but with this, where the story continued on to within this third book, it kept me so grasped within it. Stakes continue getting higher and the development of how this world and its mythology come about is so fantastically detailed. I've said this about the previous Stormlight Archive books, but despite their size, they genuinely are incredibly accessible to read and I was never feeling lost or confused at any point and neither did I feel like it dragged. One thing that's also worth mentioning is I read a lot of fantasy of course and I read a lot of war kind of centric stories. In my opinion Oathbringer has the single best battle segment of a book that I have ever read in my life. The last 200 pages of this book I absolutely flew through. Not even the last 200 pages, I think I sat and read the last 400 in a single day because I could not put it down. I think it's safe to say and no surprise that I ended up giving Oathbringer 5 out of 5 stars. The fourth book, A Rhythm of War, is coming out this month and I am so excited Although we'll see whether I pick it up straight away because there is about a three year wait between all of these books. So I may wait a little longer to pick Rhythm of War up just so the wait for the fifth book isn't too long. After completing Oathbringer, I was very much in the mood for some more high fantasy and decided to pick up A Red Country by Joe Abercrombie. This is set in his first law world and is the third and last of the companion standalones that come after the first trilogy and before the second series that he's currently in the middle of writing. In this novel, we follow Shy South, whose farm is burned and her brother and sister essentially stolen and she embarks on a journey across the red country to rescue them. This is very characteristic of Joe Abercrombie's grimdark fantasy and is inspired by a western feel. Thus far I have to say this is my favourite ever Joe Abercrombie book. I think the characters in here, while still sticking to the grimdark and moral ambiguity vibes that you get with Joe Abercrombie, were just so much more likeable than a lot of what else he writes. And one big thing I've discovered across this year is that I love a Western, particularly a Western inspired fantasy. But this made me very excited to now continue on with the new stuff that Joe Abercrombie is publishing, particularly as this did create a very interesting setup for where this is now going to go because there's about 20 years between the first and the second trilogies which these three books cover. I ended up giving Red Country four out of five stars. After that I went on to pick up Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a sci-fi story set in the world of the Aurora Academy which is essentially an intergalactic sort of a law keeping agency that are not directly affiliated with 
any of the races or planets that inhabit our solar systems. In this story, we follow the character of Ty, who is one of the best people within the school and is set to create an incredibly successful squad. However, he's busy rescuing Aurora from cryogenic sleep and misses the ceremony and is stuck with the dregs of the academy to form his squad. The worst of whom is Aurora herself, who has been in cryogenic sleep for 200 years and does not know what happened to her family or what was intended to happen to her. This band of misfits essentially come together and have to figure things out as they get increasingly harder as they start to discover the reasons for Aurora's parents going missing and why she herself has been left as the sole survivor of this spaceship. There's a fantastic found family element with this group of misfits. They have incredible personalities that invite so much humour and the action of this is fantastically paced as well as creating and really exploring the complexities of this world or worlds since we're now in space times far off into the future. Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff are very well renowned already without, within the YA science fiction sphere for the Illumini files. That partly informed my decision to pick this up because I've read the Illumini files and really enjoyed their work together. This has a very different feel to it. Obviously it's more of a novel format than the like files that are <laughs> compiled together through Illumini. But I really enjoyed this book. It's a fantastic rambunctious sci-fi adventure and I would definitely recommend it. I ended up giving this book four out of five stars. After that, I decided to stick with my YA theme and picked up Flame in the Mist by Renee Adie. This is a Japanese-inspired duology in which we follow the daughter of a famed samurai. She's set to marry the emperor's son and on her way to his palace, her convoy is ambushed and she's left as a sole survivor. She decides to dress as a boy and infiltrate the clan that she believes to be responsible for this. Now, I've had this book on my TBR for years and part of the reason I picked it up is because, again, I read The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Addy, which is one of my favourite, favourite duologies. And if you want a good fantasy romance, I 100% recommend picking it up. But while I picked this up years ago, I also heard some very mediocre reviews. So I have to say, when I finally decided to pick this up, I was incredibly pleasantly surprised by the fact that I really, really liked this book. First of all, I adore the trope of fooling a bunch of boys and a, a girl dressing up as one to infiltrate their ranks. There is a lot of Japanese inspired, of course, mythology to this, which was really interesting to read and created some very fun dynamics and the relationships between Mariko who is our protagonist and the boys who she's forming friendships and relationships with throughout this novel is really satisfying to read. I also thought a while this book isn't incredibly action filled, it really had a lovely pace to the story that Renee Addy was telling. It was a very interesting premise with a very interesting flow to the story and actually informed my decision to buy the second book right after I finished this. So I ended up giving this also four out of five stars. Afterwards, I decided to pick up Sky Key by James Frey. This is the sequel to Endgame The Calling and is a direct continuation of the events that happened in the first book. First book is centered around essentially the beginning of the game where the players are people of 12 different lines of humanity who have been informed that Endgame will occur someday. Endgame is essentially the end of humanity as we know it and the only people who will survive are the descendants of the winner of Endgame and the people who belong to their line. Obviously, this is a very high stakes story as these people search for the keys 
to unlock gates and essentially become the winner of the game. We do follow all 12 characters who participate within Endgame, so it does switch between them a lot. And there is a very kind of distanced feeling to the writing style because of that. But I actually thought that, particularly in this book, lended itself so well to the sort of clinical feeling telling of Endgame particularly as the story unfolds and that clinical feeling becomes even more interesting because there's a lot to do with basically who are the beings behind Endgame and is there a way to stop it. This series is incredibly action-packed as well. Obviously we've got people who are fighting and traveling across the world I mean, it's set very much within our world as we would expect it. But then these 12 people are there maneuvering things so that they may either kill off their competition or discover these clues and find the keys. Like I said, this book was a direct continuation to the first one, but I felt it did a really good job of drawing me in. I actually think I enjoyed this more than the first one and like there's a theme here, I ended up giving this four out of five stars. The last book I finished this month was one that I've been reading for a long time, so was super excited to finally reach the end of it. And that is Rogues, which is a short story anthology compiled by George R. R. Martin. This is a collection of 21 different stories by 21 different authors, but they all have the theme of roguish characters in whatever way they decide to interpret that. Because of the nature of this book, there's a lot of variety to what it actually offers. It does create a very good introduction to lots of new authors though and to lots of ways of interpreting this roguish archetype. Of course, one thing that really interested me is I love both a morally ambiguous character and just the kind of even mischievous character that is implied through a rogue. There were a real mix of <laughs> stories in here where I gave some one star I gave some five stars, which was fantastic. Um, my favourite story was also the one that actually informed my buying of this book initially, and that is The Lightning Tree by Patrick Rothfuss. In The Lightning Tree, we follow the character of Bast, who is essentially the apprentice to Quoth within The Name of the Wind, which is my favourite book of all time. So what I really wanted was to get at least a little bit more of the Name of the Wind world and it definitely provided that. It was a super fun story and is one that I will happily read again and again. Two others which I also gave five stars to were What Do You Do by Gillian Flynn and The Caravan to Nowhere by Phyllis Eisenstein. Overall, because this book was very up and down, I ended up giving it three out of five stars. But overall, I'd say it was a very satisfying read. Also, the last story within Rogues was George R. R. Martin's own story, A King's Brother, which follows some of the Targaryen history. And because that is so tied to Game of Thrones, it motivated me to pick up the book I'm currently reading, which is The World of Ice and Fire. This is a history book regarding the Game of Thrones world and through the history of the Targaryens and each of the individual seven kingdoms. I'm still currently reading this. I'm about 250 pages through of the 300. I say it's 300. This book is deceptively thin because there's actually a lot more in it than it looks like there will be. I thought I'd mention it since it definitely ties to rogues, but I will give more of my opinions on it in my wrap up next month. That's it from me today and for the books I read in the month of October. You can tell it was a very good reading month. I read nothing below three stars and only one of those was a three star book, the rest being all four or five stars. So I would highly recommend everything that I talked about on this list. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye.